Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can precisely change the color of an object inside of a video shot, even if the area around that object shares a very similar color, or if the object moves around a little bit during your shot, such as with this sign. So in order to make the color adjustment modification, we'll need to do everything on the color tab. So I have an unchanged copy of the clip over here on the right. With that selected, I'll jump into the color tab. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do with the shot is to use the qualifier tool in its picker mode to do a rough selection on the text that we're trying to change here. So I'm going to left click on that and any other object it would be the same way. What you should expect is that the object will show up more on the nodes area over here on the right. You may get part of the screen that you didn't want to select in the qualifier selection. What I was finding works even better than the base HSL qualifier selection though, is when the colors are really similar like this, if you go over to the RGB color selection, and then you do the qualifier one more time on it, then you get a better end result. You can see that just by selecting there, the text shows more in the nodes, which is what we want. But because we're only selecting based on a color range here, the brown that the background of the sign has won't be selected as much. So you may get better results if you use RGB instead of HSL for the qualifier. Okay, next we can use some combination of the color wheels over here or the color curves, which is the far left tab on the color tab, in order to adjust the color that is going to be showing up here. So if you offset the color, you'll notice that it can change to pretty much any color you want. So the offset wheel is a good option there. Okay, so with the color changed using the offset wheel, you'll notice that other areas which share the same color on the screen are also being selected here. So what we want to do in order to filter all of that out is to use a power window. So the power window will limit the area of the screen, which will actually be affected or keyed for this color change effect. So the power window is the third one over from the left. I personally like to use the pin curve selector because that allows you to precisely pick the points at which you want to be inside the window. So if your shape is a little bit different than just a simple circle or a square, then using the pin tool can allow you to uh, get more control over it because you can just left click and select the points at which you want to control. So I'm gonna go all the way around this text title. If you wanted even more precision, you could do two power windows, one for the top title and one for the bottom title. So you know what, let's actually go ahead and do that. I will hide that first selection and I'll just create two more. One for each of these words. So just kind of drawing a rough box around that, modifying the position of the points, making sure that everything inside the text is actually inside that power window. And then I will add one more down here. And then that looks pretty good. The advantage here is that now anything in between these two areas, such as this sign part, won't get any of the color selection period because it's not even in the power window area. Okay, so now that already looks pretty good, but the problem is if that object moves at all during your shot, which usually it would in video, then the power windows may go off center from where the text is actually. So what you need to do is track those power windows across time. So with the power window selected, go over to the tracker tool and you'll need to track forward and track in reverse so that any changes in the position of that object, the more or the shops, uh, will be tracked and the power window will automatically move its position so that it's always on top of those text elements. So I'm going to track forward here and you'll notice that DaVinci Resolve is automatically calculating, looking at the position of where the more is. We'll need to do it for the shop's power window as well, as you can see. But using the tracker, the power window is always able to keep on top of your object. So now I'm going to go back over to that uh, original keyframe and I'm going to track in reverse. If, uh, if you originally set up the power window at the first frame of your shot, then you'd only need to track forward. But I, uh, because I chose a point in the middle of the shot, I need to track in reverse too now. So let's go ahead and do that. And now if I hit play, it should look good for the more word. And we just need to repeat the steps one more time for the shop's text. So now I need to repeat it for the shop selector. What I'll do is I'll go to the first frame here and I'll adjust the power window before we hit the tracker so that it can track the areas from the first frame forward and then we don't need to click a uh, track in reverse after we do track forward. Just make sure that the characters or the object is completely within that area. And then we can go ahead and hit track forward. 
Okay, and that should pretty much be it. So back over on the edit tab, I'm going to fit the video to the screen. I'm going to hit play and take a look at the result we're getting here. So as you can see, we were able to change the color of the text on the sign, even though it's moving across time without changing the color of anything else in the shot, even the very similarly colored sign brown background. So, so that's how you can do precise color change in DaVinci Resolve 16, even when there are similarly colored objects in the shot, or even when your object is moving across time. So I hope that this video has been helpful for you guys. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future DaVinci Resolve content.